Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about roleplay combat etiquette. Next week, we're going to be talking about how to write action scenes. But before that, we need to discuss combat etiquette in roleplay. So that's what we're going to discuss this week. First, let's talk a little bit about the history of combat in text-based role-playing. The ability for your character to engage in combat has been a mainstay of text-based role-playing since the beginning, and we used to have whole very specific systems for dealing with this. And even today, what you'll find is people are still using these systems in a lot of ways, or what they're doing is using modified versions of these same systems. Role plays used to be set up based on tiers, and it was tier 1 through tier 6, abbreviated to T1, T2, etc. T1 and T2 are considered legal tiers, whereas T3 through 6 are considered non-legal tiers. And you do still see these, but back in the day, like lots of role plays used to be labeled with this T number designation. T1 is paragraph role play turn-based fighting. So what that means is you post your character attacking, and then in your partner's response, they choose if that attack hit, or if they blocked it, or if they did a counterattack. And this is very typical for what you'll find in play-by-post scenarios, so like forum-based role plays or more forum-style role plays even today, even if they don't label it T1. T2 was created as a response to Tier 1 for people who wanted faster chat-based role plays where they didn't have to wait for their partner to respond. There are a bunch of specific rules as far as word count in regards to attacks and blocks and different things like that, but what it's all about is how quickly you can accurately describe what's going on in the fight. The faster you can hit that word count with no typos in T2, the better. T3 was created for newer role players. There are no specific word counts and no penalties for typos when it comes to T3. It's all about like one post to hit, one post to block, one post to attack, that sort of thing, and it just prioritizes speed. T4 and T5 are combinations of T1 and T2, and they tend to have like point systems and things like that in them, and those ones, they change pretty often. So I would recommend Googling to get more details on what T4 and T5 are. Then T6 is anything goes, even God modding. I have never in all of my years of roleplay seen someone that actually seriously roleplays T6 combat. So as you can see, there's a pretty clear divide between narrative-based combat and speed-based combat. And today, this tier system has largely fallen out of favor. Most people are either using tier one or what they're doing is some kind of homebrew system that might or might not be based off of some of the old tiers. So now that we've talked a bit about those systems, let's go into a little bit more detail about how we're doing combat today. If you're playing in a narrative-based roleplay, you're essentially doing T1 combat. You can't god mod in this system. So what that means is that when you swing your sword or throw a punch or throw a lightning bolt, the other character has to write if that hit or not. You cannot decide if your own attacks hit. Okay, so if that's the case, how does the roleplay not just devolve into a constant uh, throwing hits that are blocked or missed and back and forth like that and nothing happens because that's boring and no one wants to write that? This is where plotting comes in. So I'm going to link my plotting video up in the card so you can go watch that because it goes into a lot more detail about the mechanics of plotting, but this is essentially how you avoid this in combat roleplay. When it comes to combat, it is important to ensure that everyone in the scene is consenting to their character getting hurt. What that means is you should plan a general idea of the scene beforehand or make sure that out-of-character communication is open throughout the scene so that you can be discussing each piece as it happens, and that way you can make sure that the scene actually reaches an ending. Make sure when you're writing combat scenes that you keep in mind one of our axioms of roleplay, and that is, everyone wants to feel special. So even if you plotted it out so that your character is supposed to win the fight, don't play it out to where your character never even takes one hit. No one wants to roleplay with somebody like that. So if for plot reasons you have a thread that's going to go that way, make sure that everyone is agreed upon the narrative reason that this is happening. 
Because there's nothing that makes people drop role plays faster than realizing that your character is special, but theirs isn't allowed to be. So what about role plays that aren't narrative? For a lot of people, Dungeons and Dragons is very combat based and they really focus on that and not the narrative aspects. When it comes to text based role playing, you'll find the same thing. You'll find combat focused role plays. The internet is a far different place than it was in the heyday of tears. Now we have integrated point systems, dice rollers, really fancy character sheets, all sorts of things like that that can aid in combat role playing so that people can really refine the system to exactly what they want it to be. So what do you do if you're joining one of those kinds of role plays? For anyone that hasn't yet, I recommend watching my being an effective role player in a group video. I'm going to link that up there as well, because we're going to talk about some similar stuff here. So when in Rome, do as the Romans do. What that means is that when it comes to the system, if it's new for you, make sure that you ask questions so that you understand exactly what system you're getting into. Understand also that you'll probably make mistakes and that's okay. Any mod that is worth their time to mod is going to help you correct those mistakes. This is of course, provided that you put in the work yourself and don't spend a lot of time arguing with them about it. So let the mods guide you with their system. Now for combat based text based role play, it can be really tempting to look at the system that's laid out for a particular role play and start to think, how can I exploit this to have the biggest, baddest, most bestest character? This is called min maxing, and I would recommend resisting this urge. This is of course, unless you have read the room and realize that you're in a role play with fellow min maxers, in which case that's what the Romans do there. So do it. So just like any other role play, I would recommend focusing on making an interesting character. Everyone wants to feel special. So if you're too focused on making the most extra bestest character, then you're going to lose people that otherwise might be great partners for you. Now, if you're doing combat style role play in a one on one setting where there's not a system sort of designed around you for that role play, then having a character sheet is a good idea. This character sheet should list all of your character's abilities, gear, weapons, things like that. And although it's not necessary to jump into the role play, it's considered good courtesy to exchange character sheets before beginning the combat role play. And of course, if you are using a character sheet, stick to it. Don't bust out some random skill that's not on your character sheet. Generally, combat role players are going to assume the Dungeons and Dragons rule where each action takes about six seconds. So what you write needs to be something that can be reasonably done in six seconds. So that means basically one action. The other thing to consider is it's generally rude to attack in your starter. Build up to it a little. And of course, in a one on one scenario, all of the things we talked about in regard to plotting are still important. So keep those out of character communication lines open. This is going to help make sure that you and your partner feel that the combat is both fair and fun. So those are my tips on role play combat etiquette when it comes to text based role play. Now me personally, when it comes to text based, I'm more of a narrative role player. I really only do combat based role plays if it's more like a tabletop type of situation. So if you are doing some of those more like system based dice roll kind of things in text based role play, let me know what systems you like to use down below. I'm really curious because I tend to just do those in a tabletop setting. And remember to like if you like this video, comment down below with any questions that you have, subscribe for more videos, click that bell for notifications, all the links to my social media down in the doobly-doo. Thank you so much for watching and make it a great day.